everyone, it's Jai452 back again inside the land of cosplay, rummaging around on Inside Cosplay. My special guest this week is none other than YouTube's own. Hi, I'm Faust from the channel It's Super Effective, where I talk about cosplay, comics, anime, anything that's good and worth talking about, I talk about it. Hi Faust, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in there, and I'm going to ask you, when did you first start cosplaying? Oh my god, um, so technically 2006, mm -hmm. but I don't consider that like my first proper cosplay because, so the concept art for Len for, from Vocaloid was leaked at that time, uh, and Miku wasn't even out at that time. Um, but I saw this concept art of an, like an anime boy, and I tried cosplaying him, but it was bad because it was just a t-shirt and a yellow tie and some black shorts I had. It like wasn't put together. And a few years later, when Len was like actually out, I think it was in 2008, uh, I did a proper cosplay of him. Um, but it's only been like since, I think, 2012 that I've really gone in on cosplay, gone in on like okay, like, let's learn new sewing styles, let's new, learn new makeup styles, let's learn how to do wigs. Awesome. Um, was there, who or what inspired you to get into cosplay? Um, I'm not really sure what it was. Um, I, I spent a lot of my life between the UK and Singapore, and cosplay was a lot bigger in Singapore than it was here. Um, but then I went to my first London MCM, and I saw cosplay was here as well. Um, so I just kind of like, was like after I went once and saw cosplay was here, I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to do it. So I think it was just seeing it could be a constant thing around me, uh, cause I'm pretty much uh, a person that's like, go ham or go home. Mm -hmm. Uh, so not living, so living in a landmass where it was present definitely helped me to just go, okay, I'm going to go ham. You mentioned that it was big in Singapore, um, just on a grand scale, you know, cause London MCM and London. Uh, film and Comic Con are always really big events that everybody wants to go to from yeah. all over the UK. Um, would you mention, well, would you say that Singapore has an even bigger reception than what you would find at those events in London? These days I'd say they're about the same size, but mm -hmm. back then when London MCM wasn't as big, um, definitely Singapore is bigger. Um, I, I still, to this day, say Singapore is like a little bit better in terms of anime cosplays, mm -hmm. but in terms of cosplay overall, they're basically the same size now. It's interesting that you mention that because um, another YouTuber that I interviewed about uh, cosplaying um, across the world, Milk Jam Juice. Hi, Milk Jam Juice. Um, she she lives in uh, Japan, mm. and she mentions that cosplays, uh, while very big over there, um, are not really something that you specifically find. You, like, you won't find it somebody like walking about the street in a costume. You predominantly carry your costume with you to where you're going and you get dressed there. Mm. Um, did you find a similar kind of idea in Singapore? Like a lot of people going to the events with their costume and not in costume? Yeah, I definitely say that's um, has been my experience there. And like, it's kind of been my experience here until like the past two or three years. And now like when you're on the train to MCM, you see people in costume and it's like, oh, well, there, there's, there's a Scarlet Witch right there. Weird. <laughs> um, the only time I've really had an experience of that is when I was coming back from a Halloween event. Yeah. And um there was like a bus stop like a, a connection bus i had to get and i came off the bus uh, from one bit and i was waiting for my my next bus kind of thing and i bumped into a friend of mine from college and i was like standing talking to them and the next thing you know this person comes walking up that knows my friend and she's in a complete skeleton outfit and i'm like that's just something you don't see every day yeah and the funny thing was I'd spent like the last two, three hours surrounded by people dressed as various Halloween characters. Yeah. So I, like the irony of this was not lost on me. <laughs> and I was just like thinking to myself, you know, if only Alanis Morissette was here, because then I could tell her this is ironic. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. 
<laughs> what has been the most challenging cosplay that you've ever, you've ever done so far, both from the making of a costume and the acting side of it? Because there is a little bit of acting involved in cosplay, regardless of whether it be how a character poses or how they might speak or just generally how they might interact with somebody else. So let's talk about the, the making of a costume first. To date, what has been the most challenging one for you? Um, I would I would say it's Noctis, um, but I like fully admit Noctis in himself is an uh, overly complicated costume. Mm-hmm. It's just that, like, so I was invited to PAX East last year, um, mm-hmm. and I, but I only found out like two weeks before PAX East was happening that I was going, and I found out while I was in LA, and I didn't return to the UK for another two days after that. So I like had to land in the UK, go fabric shopping, and just kind of make Noctis um, on the fly. The game wasn't out at this point, so I just had like some vague reference images to go off of. I couldn't find like a sideways image for the life of me of his costume. So like, I, I just I just kind of had to wing it. Um, and the only reason I did Noctis, I, I wanted to do Zero Suit Link, but I suck at skin tight things. Um, so it just, it was just, uh, it was it wasn't the making so much as the time constraints in the making and like you know when you're stressed about time suddenly everything becomes a hundred times harder. Yeah, um, I've got an event coming up on the twenty fourth of next month, so there's uh-huh. like there's plenty of time. You know, yeah, yeah, but um, it, it, as you seen before we started recording, I just got something in the mail and I'm like, it's finally here! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's, there's another thing that I'm doing as well um, in relation to this cosplay. And I'm like trying to work out how you do it because I've never done it before. Mm. So I'm kind of slightly panicking that I won't get it done to my standard that I want. Yeah. Which personally, like, um, I'm just going to add this in. When you're making a costume, guys, from scratch and you know you've got plenty of time, ignore that standard of what you want to begin with. You know, and just go with what you can do. Yeah. Or what is achievable. Because if yeah. you go like full panic mode on that and you've got that standard of really, really high, you're just going to stress yourself out. I mean, personally, like something I've learned in the past year is don't really think I'm going to wear this cosplay to this convention. Um, something I've just kind of been doing is I want to make this costume. And if a convention comes up and the costume's still not done, I'm like, oh well, I've got like 20 other costumes I can wear. I, like, I can always improve the makeup on an old costume. Definitely. Um, so let's go with the same question again, but this time we'll look at it from an acting point of view. So who has been the most challenging uh, cosplay to date for you from the acting side? See, this is the funny thing. I've never found, not for a single costume, have I found the acting challenging. And I think like my experience in terms of that with cosplay is a little bit unique because um, like I went to a performing arts school, like the type that you go from like the beginning of year seven until at the end of college and you basically end up with a university degree a few years early. Um, and then like after that, I was working as a professional model. So I just kind of applied everything I learned from those two things into cosplay. Um, so posing and stuff, it's never been that big of a deal. Um, and I, especially because I do a lot of my photo shoots myself. Uh, so I just kind of go into it knowing what I want before before I start taking the pictures, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of interacting with people and like doing the voices, was there any particular character that was a little bit more difficult than any other? People don't really tend to interact with me when I'm in cosplay, but I've got a really strong resting bitch face, so I kind of put it down to that. Um, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, you know what would be really handy when that kind of thing comes around is like, you know when you've um, spent like four or five hours already at a con and you're very, very hungry, but you're in costume, and like, I don't know whether you've had this experience or not, but a few of my friends have. Um, like they'll go and they'll try to get something to eat and there's already like someone there with a camera. Oh, can I just get a picture of you? And they're like halfway through a hamburger or like hot dog or something. And it's like this God awful picture 
yeah. it ends up getting posted everywhere online. And I've had like a couple of friends, I've had that happen to them and they've gotten really upset about it. And it's like, I keep trying to explain to them because I can't always get down to the same events as him. Mm. Um, you've got to have this kind of like, do not even look at me, bitch face on, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, for me, I just don't eat when I'm in cosplay. <laughs> People, like my friends find it insane. Like I will literally go like, uh, cause my convention days, I think are a little bit longer than average. Like I get up at about four in the morning. I'm in cosplay for nine. Uh, and then I don't get to bed until about 3 a.m. the next day. Um, and like that's like a convention day for me. And I will not eat if I have even got makeup on. Cause I'm just like, I don't want to touch it up. I don't want to do anything that risks getting anything on this costume. <laughs> That, that is totally me when I do cons as well, like, um, because, mainly because I'm traveling a lot, mm. um, I have to go up like really insane hour, like, um, I'm pretty sure that it's still the middle of the night when I'm getting up. Yeah. <laughs> and then traveling out to where I'm going and when I'm in costume, I'm like, okay, I'm in costume now. I always make sure I have something to eat before I get my costume on. Mm. Yeah, so I'll maybe eat a small, like, grape or something. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a grape, I'll eat that. Or a mint. Woohoo! Um, and then when the... It's predominantly, like... Because um, a lot of people do say that when they have makeup on, they predominantly want nothing. Like, no food to pass them. Yeah. But you'll find that those are the people that are walking past all the food stalls going... Oh. See... <laughs> See, I, see, I'm known as the Jewish mother of cosplay because, like, I don't, like, seriously, if any of my friends need something to eat, I'll just pull out, like, a pack of small sweets from my bag. I don't eat them, but I'm just like, have some small sweets. Or if someone wants a drink, I'm like, I've got straws, save your makeup. <laughs> um, but you, you do find that people who do go insane with makeup are the ones that are, like, going past the food stalls, so just kind of longingly looking at the food, like, yeah. I want to eat. I can't. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay, makeup, crazy. Um, characters also. H have you ever had a really weird interaction when you've been in costume with uh, a particular fan of whatever you were cosplaying? Um, kind of. This was like way, way back, like before I was known, like I think I didn't even start YouTube at or I had a YouTube channel, but we don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> we still uh, get. <laughs> so this girl came up to me and she was cosplaying Sebastian from Black Butler, but she had bunny ears on. And I think I was cosplaying either Alois or Ciel. And she comes up to me and literally tackles me to the ground and goes, I'm grabbing all the shotas. And I was quite young at this point and I was so confused. And this woman had to be at least like 25, 26, which you know, for me, being a, like a, basically a kid at this time, I was like, I'm going to die. I am going to die here. Oh my gosh. But that, the, the, other than that, nothing weird has happened when I've been in cosplay. That's just been the only really weird thing. Um, I'll share with you my first experience. Um, I, I will need to send you through a picture at some point so you can see the, the costume that I was wearing. But I remember doing my first um, Glasgow film in Comic-Con. Mm. And I did the first cosplay that I've ever done out of a, a fancy dress party thing, which I'll get onto later on about that with you as well. Um, so I was doing a male version of Harley Quinn. Okay. And this was long before the Suicide Squad had even been announced. Mm. So I was going more classic Harley, but trying to put like a male spin to it. Um, and it went down well. I had this amazing handmade jacket um, that I was wearing. And I went along to the Comic-Con. My hammer was, or should I say my mallet, was the one thing that was driving me insane the entire day. But when I was there, I only noticed like four other guys doing Harley mm. and like a plethora of women, you know, like I couldn't take five steps without bumping into a female-esque Harley. 
Um, and I remember speaking to one of the guys and I said, um, so just exactly how many of us guys are doing already today? And he's like, I think there's like another three. I was like, oh, that's really, really bad, but we're trailblazers. Yay. Yeah. Um, so as I'd finished talking to him, I'm walking down this aisle and I can just hear this Harley at the top of like somebody's lungs. I honestly thought somebody was like being killed. <laughs> and I was like, okay, it has to be like a female that they're screaming at because they're screaming Harley. Um, and the next thing I know, there's this like gust of wind and then these arms just wrap around me and I'm like freaking the hell out. I'm just tensed up like going, okay, don't panic, don't panic. I'm possibly being assaulted, but don't panic. Um, and it was this little kid who could only have been about like, I don't know, maybe six, seven years of age. And they're grabbing onto me so tight and hugging me so tightly. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, I can understand the, the, the hugging thing. Yeah. It's insane. But I always say to people who are starting cosplays, be prepared for that kind of crap. It well, will like, happen. <laughs> well, like for me, I'm not really a touchy feely person. So, like, when someone hugs me when I'm in cosplay, I'm like, you have picked the wrong person. Uh, but I will be nice, but you have picked the wrong person. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm the complete opposite of that. I love <laughs> hugs and such. Like, so unless I'm in a like really crabby mood, then it's just like, I like my personal space. And quite frankly, you're in it. <laughs> So please get out of it. Um, okay, so my next question for you is, um, what, in your opinion, what is the most difficult thing or character to cosplay as, both from the making of the costume and the acting side, in regards to both yourself and other people? So let's start with yourself. Like, what do you think as the most difficult cosplay to do both from the making of it and the acting um i'm not really sure because i don't really tend to i don't know like if i'm one of those people where if i want to do something i'll end up doing it and if i don't want to do something i don't tend to like i don't think about how difficult something is you know mm -hmm. um i just kind of do it and keep working at it until it looks good um as in, like, difficulty that I'm having at the moment, I'm working on the Red Mage from Final Fantasy XIV. Um, and that's been the most difficult thing that I've had so far, but even then I kind of just know, like, it's going to get done to a standard I like. I, it, I think, like, that's the trap lots of cosplayers fall down. They go down the route of, oh, this is so difficult, this is going to be so difficult. Um, you just don't even think about it, and then suddenly nothing's difficult. Awesome. Um, is there any particular characters or even creatures, <laughs> I don't know, um, that you would specifically steer away from or any particular type of cosplay that you would just go, right, I do not have the skill set for that? Um, like I said, I don't really tend to think about I don't have skill sets for, but like, I know things that I do need to work on for longer than typical are anything involving like latex, um, just because um, when you use latex glue, the the latex sheeting can tend to curl, and then it will be misshapen. Um, the only times I needed to use it are for body suits, and even then, it's like uh, like they can come out weird shapes and stuff, and you know, suddenly you've got three arms, like. It, <laughs> Like, so anything that involves latex, I tend to avoid, and if I can use like a stretchy PVC instead, I will. But then there are some effects that you can only get with latex. Uh, that so anything where I would like, um, I guess an example would be uh, Novar from the Young Avengers comics, um, Marvel Boy. I specifically would want to use latex for him because when Grant Morrison made the character, the whole like, there, there's a whole, like, sub-story of fetishes going on in the Marvel Boy comic that, like, like the main villain's a dominatrix. Like, I'm, I'm just going to say in general, because, like, 
like I mentioned to you beforehand, um, I am a fan of what you do on YouTube. So yeah. um, I wasn't massively big into Marvel. Mm. Um, like I probably watched the nineteen uh, the nineteen nineties X Men cartoon, and that's <laughs> as, as far as my um, like knowledge of Marvel went. It was like, oh, Marvel has a thing called the X Men. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, and I, I got like the subplots or the big overall sub theme of yeah. the X-Men, which is it's okay to be different, mm. you know. Um, but other than that, I was like DC all the way. <laughs> so, and um, a few years on and I'm still DC all the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I totally get the kind of like subplots through from watching your show and you saying, okay, well, there's subplots here, here, and here with these characters. So um, I can understand the latex thing on that front. Mm. Um, is there any particular characters or, again, cosplay creatures that you would advise other people not to do? Um. <laughs> or just advise against, not necessarily tell them don't do this, but just say, well, you might want to build up to doing that kind of thing. Sailor Moon, because she's harder than she looks, and I've only ever seen about three good Sailor Moons in my life. Okay. Um, I, it's just, for me personally, I think her basic animation outfit is nice, but then there's also the musical outfits, and I think if you're going to do her, go ham or go home, do the musical outfits, and most people do not have the skill set to do the musical outfits. It's funny you should say that, actually, when um, you contacted me earlier today, I was actually sitting in um, the dentist office, and I was on Instagram at the time, because um, I had a dental appointment today. Mm. Um, I was on Instagram at the time, and I've got a few friends who live over in America, and they posted uh, pictures of a con that they were at recently, and it was all like a Sailor Moon lineup, all guys. And I'm like, that is fantastic. Cause like, it really does look like the animation kind of style look. Mm. So I was really, really impressed by that. And I was like, Ooh, good, good on you guys. You're brave enough to do that. Yeah. Um, this is also a group that's brave enough to do all male Disney princesses. If you can wrap <laughs> your head around that, um, go check them out on Instagram guys. <laughs> um, so is there any other kind of particular cosplay um, characters or things that you would advise work work to if you were it's, to start starting out? I mean, Fire Emblem as well. Like Fire Emblem just has a lot of armor in there, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, "Oh, it's cartoony armor." When if you look at the designs on Fire Emblem and you look at a lot of the designs in, say, Lord of the Rings, something people would take seriously, they're not dissimilar. Um, and I think people would look at Lord of the Rings and go, oh, that's quite difficult. Um, treat Fire Emblem the same way, because uh, a lot of people don't, and then they wonder why their cosplay doesn't look as good as they imagine. Okay. It's funny that you should mention the, the, Lord, of the, the Lord of the Rings, because um, the last event that I went to, there was um, three people um, at this particular Glasgow Film and Comic Con. Um, a little baby who could only have been I think maybe two months, three months old, dressed as a little hobbit. And I was like, if that kid is being entered into the cosplay masquerade or cosplay competition, there's no way anybody else is winning because it is, it's cuteness personified, you know, you, yeah. can't, you can't win against that. Um, yeah. A few years back when I was at Hyper Japan, there was a kid, um, he was, could have only been about five or six, dressed as Kid Gohan from Dragon Ball Z and I was just like okay um and it was well done like the kid had makeup a wig and everything so I was just kind of like uh why why this kid is the best cosplayer here <laughs> um the second set of people that I met um and I did actually get a picture of them which is is, is really awesome um I was going around to present um Sean Aston uh, with an iGame business card and I saw this man and woman standing just off the side of where Sean Aston was. It was like he was around the corner kind of thing. And I kind of glanced at them 
and I honestly thought they were Renaissance like characters. <laughs> it didn't dawn on me, and I noticed she was wearing a pendant, but I didn't get a good look at the pendant kind of thing. Mm. Um, and when I seen that Sean Aston was busy, I came like back around the corner and um, I looked at them again, and I seen she was wearing the Even Star, and I was like, "So they're Aragon and Arwen." <laughs> How dumb do I feel right now? Um, but I managed to go up and have a nice conversation with them and I got a couple mm. of pictures of them, which was cool. Um, but that kind of goes to show that when you're at a Comic-Con, guys, looks can be deceiving, mm. you know? Um, so, speaking of Comic-Cons, there are two types of events that we can go to here in the UK. There are your big once a year Comic-Cons, which are your MCMs, your film and Comic-Cons, and maybe one or two other specialised events in various locations. Um, but there is also your smaller, more local Comic-Cons that happen every two, three months. Which of the two do you prefer to go to, or do you like a blend of the two? Um, I tend not to actually go to the smaller... I, like, I live in London, so like there are like Comic-Cons every like two months for me. Mm -hmm. So like I tend to just focus on the bigger conventions. I don't know, I like being like fairly anonymous, so... And I can be quite anonymous at a bigger con, whereas if I go to a smaller con... Um, I don't know, I, I feel like... You know, people keep seeing you walking around, and then your cosplay loses some of its luster when people have seen you for the fifth time. They start picking up on the floors that you know that's there, and you don't want them to know that's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's also just like I feel like there's more to do at the bigger conventions as well, um, and then I, there's more people I know that go to the bigger conventions, like more photographers. Um, so I can have like a solid day booked doing photo shoots rather than just going there, maybe doing one photo shoot and that's it. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you need a sec? No, I'm okay. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that you'd spent some time in Singapore. Is did, did they have a kind of similar idea? Did they have like the big once a year Comic Cons and the smaller local ones? Um, the only con I've ever been to in Asia, in Singapore that I'm like specifically aware of, I think it's called uh, Cosplay Fest Asia, uh, Cosplay Fest Asia or something. Like when I go, I just go family, and so it's it, it's kind of, kind of like all I know that's there because I moved away from there when I was fairly young. Mm -hmm. um, and when I go back, it's like always around that time. But I believe that one's twice a year. I think they have a summer one and a Christmas one, but it's actually in November. Awesome. Uh, possibly people who are watching from that part of the world, please do let us know in the comments section down below. Um, so my next question for you is, when you've been at these particular events, uh, what is the one thing that you're most excited for? And the one thing that you either, well, either is or used to be the most nerve-wracking for you? Um, I've never really been nervous when I go to a convention. Um, <laughs> sorry about That's that. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, I've never been nervous when I go to a convention. Uh, it's... I don't know. I always feel like I'm going home when I'm going to a convention. I just... You know, I say cosplayers are the rejects of the rejects and we're all one big messed up family uh, <laughs> and that's why like when there's infighting in the cosplay community or drama i'm always that one that just goes hey you stop fucking things up am i allowed to swear i am i yeah, to swear? Really <laughs> um, um but like as in terms of things that i'm most excited for it's just seeing friends it it like friends from all over like mm -hmm. Europe, basically, because I like people come from Germany, Switzerland, Finland, just to come to London events, and like I go to Paris and Germany to go to. Like, Do you so... know what the, the funny thing is? Um, I came the website that I work for, and hey guys, go check out Icon because you know we have so much content and stuff, which we will get into at some point. But we have um, a, a yearly kind of meet up 
which coincidentally this year, uh, the big big boss of our game who is going to be watching this and saying what the hell is he saying um, is going to be coming to the event that I'm going to next um, mm. but I have one second so yeah, I'm so yeah, sorry no problem. No problem. and we're back so yeah um, as I was mentioning we normally try to have a meet up where we can all get together and just be like, hi, so this is you in person. You're an absolute pain in the ass online. So <laughs> um, it normally does take place in London. And the last two times we've had the chance, it was down in London. Mm. Um, and they've always asked me, are you coming to this particular event? Are you going to be able to make it? And it's like, I would love to. But traveling from Scotland to London requires a lot of the money. Yeah. Even yeah. with a rail card, it's at least sixty pounds, isn't it? It's it's insane. It's not that I couldn't do it, but yeah, the amount of time that it takes for them to decide when we're going to do it, and from like when we're doing it to when it's actually getting done, is sometimes not enough time to save an awful lot of money. Which is why I've repeatedly kind of like said to them, look, if we're doing one in London, I need to know at beginning of the year preferably yeah. the end of the previous year so i can start <laughs> saving mm. um but i would love to go to london comic con at some point and just meet people you know because i haven't had the opportunity to do that uh, it's, it's definitely my favorite con like in the uk like i've been going since it was in its old venue um I, and you know I'm one of those people that's like, it's not Comic-Con, it's Expo. Like, I've been going since before they added Comic-Con to it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, okay. What would be one of the more, uh, what, what would be one of the things that you're most excited about when you go to these events? Uh, excited about just to work with photographers, make new friends, make new connections. Um, and there's also like, I, like I get to see my friends, uh, like my YouTube friends. Like I'm friends with Nudarella. I'm friends with Becky Cruel, uh, Kelsey Ellison, Abby Pop, like the Galaxy Girls. Um, I, I really like them. I like them a lot. We barely ever get to talk because we're all really busy people. Um, so just seeing them, the, the, like all four of them have such a great energy about them, um, and like especially like, like I'm always excited to see Connie because her YouTube career has just snowballed and like I met her when she didn't even have a hundred thousand subscribers. Now I think she's pushing a million and it's, it's just great to see how she's evolved. Like she's intimidating because she's so confident. It's like intimidating, but I love just like, I'm so happy for her and I just, I'm happy that she's a friend in my life. And I, so getting to see her in particular is like, yeah, go Connie. <laughs> so that's why I always feel is kind of awkward when you end up going to the, the larger comic cons because like as i mentioned i don't often get to go to um a, a crap ton of these events so whenever mm. i do go to them if it's like a bigger one i always feel i only get like a small portion of time with people yeah um i remember going to the, the like the, the one that i was mentioning about that sean Aston's at and my friend um luna lunatic cosplays was there mm. and she was actually one of the judges for like the the cosplay event and she was dressed up as spike from buffy a gender bent spike because obviously james masters was there as well and it was a big deal mm. and i was there as poison ivy now this is the middle of august last year and my outfit for poison ivy was pretty revealing and pretty almost no clothing kind of thing so i was like wandering around in the middle of august in scotland freezing my ass off while everybody else was like dying of heat and i remember coming up to jillian uh oh, <laughs> whoops uh, i remember coming up to lunatic uh luna cosplay and saying um hi i'm like really really cold can i have your big leather jacket <laughs> and she like turns to me and said but then if i give you my leather jacket my cosplay isn't complete and i'm like i don't care i'll be warm <laughs> i need heat 
Um, so I love instances like that. I only actually got to see yeah. her for like 10 minutes or something. Mm. Um, and I always find that that's the thing when you go to bigger conventions that you do only have so much time to speak to somebody before you have to like be rushed off um, or they have to rush off. It's kind of what I like to refer to as a New York minute. Yeah. You know? And sorry to anyone who lives in New York, but it, it's just how we refer to it. You only get so much time with somebody. Um, have you ever taken part in any of the cosplay competitions, like the masquerades or just general contests for cosplay? I have, and I have so many bad stories. <gasps> share some uh, of them. Okay, this is the only one I share because okay. I've like, talked okay. about it in a video, uh, but then... <laughs> So it was the London Super Comic Con competition, and I did, um, so in the drag world, because uh, I used to do drag, there's a type of drag known as genderfuck, where you might, like, you know, you might look as feminine as possible, but then not wear a bra, or you'll have really manly shoulders, and I did this version of Harley Quinn, but I didn't pad, so I still looked, like, female face, but then I had a man's body, but then I, like, painted on boobs, so from the front they looked like boobs, and then if you saw it from an angle it'd look flat. Um, and it was a mess. It, it was a mess. It just didn't work. But I still went into the contest, and it was the Suicide Squad comics Harley from the New 52. And um, mid-performance, my corset slipped down, and so both nipples were showing. And I like quickly pulled it up, thinking, oh, no one saw, no one saw, no one saw. Keep in mind that one of my cosplay idols, Yaya Han, was one of the judges. And I see her like scribble something down as soon as... Um, my chest fell down <laughs> as soon as the course it fell down but I think no one saw no one saw when I get home from the convention a week passes masquerade pictures come out I see about four none of them are a nipple shot I'm like good I'm safe two days later like ten pictures are sent to me all of them are solid nipple shots and like some of them were like progressing as if it was like a moon cycle <laughs> of my nipple that was like... that, so that's um why I don't do contests anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the flip side to that, you mentioned that Yaya Han was one of the judges. Is that something that you've ever gotten to do yourself at a, a cosplay event? Have you ever been asked to judge? And Yeah, um, I actually was a judge at EGX last year for, um, I think it was, it was, the contest was done by Zonic Productions. Um, she, uh, Ziggy Zonic, she does a lot of the sort of competitions and I think just the southeast but she also does EGX um uh, so I did that I judged that competition but only for the Friday um and, and other, other than that I haven't really judged anything other than a few online contests awesome and just how difficult is that you know like judging somebody else's cosplay um it depends because as a cosplay like you're being asked to be a judge for your perspective and that's why i think it's best when there are four judges each of them specializing in a different thing and looking back on um the ugx contest i judged in particular um i don't I feel like it wasn't well balanced because it was me um my friend kaho who was actually in um channel 4's wtf is cosplay and my friend fiona who I unfortunately don't know her cosplay page name, so she's just going to be Fiona for now. Um, and then another lady whose name I don't remember. Um, but the four of us, we all had a slight bias towards anime and Japanese video games. And um, so there were Star Wars cosplayers on that stage um, coming out doing lightsaber stuff. Um, and looking back, they might, or there were Fallout cosplayers that were really accurate and had light up costumes. But at the end of the day, we gave the prizes to the anime cosplayers because that's what we know and we could accurately judge it. Um, and they weren't necessarily, looking back, they weren't necessarily the most impressive costumes, but there was no one there to argue for them. And we couldn't give an award when we don't know the source. Right. Um, I think a lot, of, well, I'm not specifically sure whether that's um for your location or that particular event but when I spoke to um, Luna Seal Cosplay uh, she mentioned how it was set up as each judge specified in a particular type of cosplay like yeah. um, 
one of them specified an armoured cosplay, so like all your kind of <laughs> really brick hard, I'm carrying this around and being weighed down by it all day <laughs> type of people. And somebody was like materials, other people were like, <clears throat> um, like makeup and various other things. So that's how they do it. And yeah. I think that's actually Showmasters that does that, so you can blame it on them and say that that's what they do. Um, but she men she did mention that predominantly whenever you go to an event, that's what the majority of judges and MCs will do. They'll have a specific area of expertise that they're known for within cosplay. Um, yeah. But it's interesting seeing it being done from, <coughs> you're a fan of blank, so you're the best person to judge that. Um, yeah. Would you have any advice for anybody who has been invited to judge and maybe hasn't done it before? Um, sort of just going unbiased. Um, if you are given reference, Im like in the cost competitions I've judged, we were never given reference images of the characters. And I think that would help a lot. Um, even if you ask for like a sign up list and who that people are cosplaying beforehand, just quickly, do your own research, um, just try and be, just as in an attempt to try and be fair. I know it takes extra work, but ultimately you've been asked to judge. It's an honor, so doing the extra work is part of the package. Awesome. Um, okay, so my next question for you, in your opinion, what are the best and the worst things that a new cosplayer can do when they're getting ready to go to a cosplay event? Uh, best things are be confident, learn the trade so learn how to sew learn wigs le just do your research basically and practice your google foo google is your best friend um worst things are not wearing a wig if you can't commit to a wig you can't commit to a cosplay that's what i say i know some people are going to disagree but i always think you know ultimately you're dressing up these as these characters that are bigger than life and a wig will just help you elevate to that bigger than life look. Um, makeup for males and females. No one in Hollywood has bad skin. No one in anime has bad skin. No one in a video game has bad skin. And if they do have bad skin, it's makeup bad skin. It's not real bad skin. So you just, you need to paint, a, if you, they've got bad skin, paint a blank canvas on yourself, then put it on with makeup. I, it's a lot of work, but that's what cosplay is. Another worst thing is if you see someone doing something you don't like, is being judgmental. Because if you've got room to be judging other people where you haven't been asked to be a judge, you should probably be focusing on yourself because, you know, there's probably a lot to improve on your own costume if you have time to be judging other people. Because I know personally when I'm at an event, I'm constantly thinking, my costume could fall apart any minute now. I shouldn't have hot glued this piece together. Generally when I'm in that position, it's, oh my god, I hope no child comes up to me and pulls on any part of my costume that could easily just yank off. See, I don't have to worry about that. Resting bitch face. It, it's a tool. <laughs> it's a tool. Children to, are scared of me. I need to learn that. I need to learn that. But then I've worked with young children almost my entire life, so... See, I've got the resting bitch face from working with children my entire life. Really? My, par my parents ran a foster home when I was growing up, but now I'm just like, <sighs> I hate kids. I hate kids so much. In, in that case, then, when I eventually get down to London, I totally need to hang out with you and just learn the, the resting bitch face, as in, do not even approach me, child. <laughs> so that I can easily get around a con without some child just yanking a piece of costume off me. Um, so, yeah, okay. Um... Speaking of which, let's go into a kind of like subcategory question here. Um, age differences within okay. cosplay. Now, when I first started cosplaying or even had the notion of cosplaying, I only had small pieces of reference to go by, which is uh, the internet. Mm. Um, and when I started first really researching this, um, it started to feel like I started to notice like a kind of pattern. While you did see um, parental groups like mums, dads, children doing cosplay, it didn't seem like they were really cosplaying to me. It just seemed like they're dressed up, they've had a picture taken, and now they're off to 
a Halloween or fancy dress party. What I could get of Comic Con, there seemed to be a specific age bracket, mm. which seemed to be like mid early teens to mid thirties. And I thought, well, I'm well within that age bracket, so I'm fine, you know? Um, and then when I went to Comic Con, I realized, whoa, you know, like my mind exploded. It was like, there are so many different people here, all age groups. There are young babies that can only be months old. And on the other end of that, there are people who are, to put it politely, one foot in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a very wide age, uh, age range there and I'm so happy that there is a wide age range there when you... so my question to you is when you first started in cosplay did you have a similar idea in your head was it like oh there's only going to be this age group this age group and this age group here or did you think yeah there's going to be a big massive age group there um I didn't really pay attention to other people. I know that's going to sound weird. I just didn't have an idea of other people. I just was so focused on myself that, and my costume that I was like, eh, like there'll be people there. Let, let's see what happens. Like, um, I don't know. For me, it's a bit weird. Like, I've, I've always made friends with people that are older than myself. And I know I come across as a little bit, like in terms of personality, I come, I come across as a little bit older than myself. Um, I don't know. Age is being put on famousbirthdays.com soon, which is weird because that's really? the first time my age is going to be out on the internet. Um, uh, but other than that, like, yeah, I come across as much older than I really am, so I, I've never really worried about, oh, people might be older than me, people might be younger than me. I've just always done me. <laughs> awesome. Um, did it surprise you when you went to your first ever Comic Con event that there was like a very wide age range there? Uh, again, not really. I I I've, was aware by being active on online web forums for years by that point that the anime attracted uh, and comics attracted an entire huge age range of people. So I think logic just kind of told me that the events uh, would do the same. Um, in regards to all the cosplays that you've done so far, has there been any particular cosplay that resonated with our particular age group like really like say for instance um teenagers like somewhere between 12 and 13 or 12 and 14 um has there ever been a cosplay that you've done that you've had a lot of 12 to 14 year olds just running up to you and going oh my god you look amazing blah 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 and spoken to you like the character from whatever <laughs> you know um I think my noise cosplay, um, my noise from Dramatic and Wonder cosplay, um, got quite a lot of attention at the conventions I took him to. And then also on top of that, um, I sell prints of my cosplays on an Etsy store. Um, and I can see that most of the people that buy my noise, noise prints are sort of like between the ages of, you know, 14 to 17 years old, and they're typically female. Um, and so I kept that in mind since then, like who is this character going to appeal to when I do a photo shoot? Because there's a difference between a photo shoot from me and a photo shoot that where I'm selling prints. Okay. Um, have it, well, uh, okay, there's another one for age in there that I want to ask, but mm. I can't remember it at the moment, which is terrible. Um, because, like, I have a list of questions, like, just right here yeah. in terms of questioning. And um, because, like, age differences in cosplay is something that is quite a general question, I've only just written it down as age difference. <laughs> so, um, okay, yes, right. Is there any particular types of cosplay that you just kind of, like, think, oh, God, that's way too, like, either adult or something that a child shouldn't do? Um, I don't know, like, obviously there's, like, sexy cosplays when you go out and nothing but, like, you know, for dudes it would be, like, a speedo, and then for women it would be bra and panties. Um, but, you know, once you're 18 years old, do whatever you want. Um, I, I, I'm quite, like, 
free spirited like once you're 18 do whatever you want but before then maybe be a bit careful because there are a lot of people out there that will try and take advantage of you at those young ages um but there to to, to give you something kind of like to go off of what i'm on about here is um a friend of mine um who encourages her young young daughter um to do cosplay stuff and to actually make cosplay costumes herself um would not want her to do the Suicide Squad Harley, the Margot Robbie version. Mm. Um, so they've said, no, you can't do um, what they very lovingly call in their house, the underpants Harley. Why don't we do this version of the Harley from um, DC Superhero Girls? Mm. So that's, it's kind of similar, but it's not as adult. As yeah. that one, you know, so she can rest easy knowing her child is not wandering around in cocoa pants. Yeah, no, I um, think that's I think that's good, especially like with a lot of um, I, I think this applies way more to female characters than male characters, unfortunately. So many female characters through history have been made as just a pure sex object, and so it is risky when young girls get into cosplay. And they see like these female characters that are have become strong independent females, but a lot of their costumes are still made with like that sex object description at their core. Um, so, like if you're a parent that's got a kid that cosplays, just sort of be careful. And even if that, because I know what I was like when I was a teenager. So if that kid's telling you no, it's not it's not a sexual thing. Like just 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 make like see the costume for yourself on the kid. Like don't just trust that word for it. Definitely. Um, Okay, so the next uh, set of questions, which is a really interesting one, is another one of ones that I've just kind of written one word. (laughs) Props. Now, props fall into two categories for me and then three subcategories in one of those two categories. Well, actually in both. So Mm -hmm. one is I can take this prop with me to a Comic-Con. And the second one is I can take this prop to a photo shoot. Mm. And only a photo shoot. <laughs> so the three subcategories for both is this prop is nice and small, it fits in my pocket or my bag and I'm good to go. This prop is medium size, will essentially annoy me if I have to hold it for like seven or so hours. But it's not going to kill me. And, oh my god, this bre- uh, this prop is so huge, it's going to break my back, and I swear to god, I want to break it in half. So, when it comes to all three versions of those props, which are you most likely to take with you to a Comic-Con event? Now, I know most cosplayers will say, well, it depends what costume I'm doing. So let's say that you have a costume that has requires or should I say requires a rather large prop are you more inclined to take that prop with you to a comic-con event or would you leave it for a photo shoot um well like I've always been a person that focuses on the costuming and then treats props as secondary so I feel like if your costume hinges entirely on the prop your costume's probably not good enough uh, which is kind of sounds bitchy, but I stand by it. Um, <laughs> but so, but with that being said, if I'm gonna go with a prop, go ham or go home. So I kind of feel like, you know, a heavy prop. It's gonna be heavy. It's gonna break my back, but I can make it look bomb. So, <laughs> would you be comfortable taking something that you maybe spent a lot of time making in terms of a prop that? is rather large like for instance let's say you did uh, a gender bent version of jinx from league of legends now she has the big massive fish rocket launcher kind mm. of thing if you had to make something like that that's extremely detailed would you feel comfortable taking that to the likes of a london film and comic con or mcm I mean, it's a risk, but ultimately, I, where else are people going to see it? If I was just going to do a photo shoot, I could Photoshop it. Um, medium-sized props, again, depending on the costume, costume that you're doing, are you more inclined to take them with you to co- Comic-Cons or photo shoots? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, definitely Comic-Cons. I, like, props in general for me is just like a pure Comic-Con thing. Because um, if I've got a photo shoot where I need a prop, 
what I tend to do, and I've only really done this for other cosplayers that I've assisted, um, I'll make a tiny version of the prop and then take a picture of it in the same resolution as the big prop um, at the same focal length where the prop should be and then just Photoshop it into the original picture. Because um, I think for a photo shoot, it's not necessary to spend all of your money making a giant prop. I think a giant prop or a medium-sized prop or even a small prop is only really necessary if you if you're showing the costume off to actual people. Okay. Um, speaking of props, when it comes to props, you do, you mentioned that you would make a smaller version of mm. whatever prop it is you're making. Um, when you're doing a prop for a costume. On average, if you're making it, do you make it from A, scratch? B, do you buy in a ready-made prop, well, ready-made to like close to what you want it to look to and then customize it so that it does look what you want it to? Or would you just buy in ready-made like prop prop? Uh, I tend to make my stuff from scratch. Um, the way I go about making things is a little bit different. Uh, a lot of times I might, uh, so I like to make things out of clay and then make a mold from that. Mm -hmm. um, but if I don't do that, I'll 3D print. Awesome. Um, on average, if you're, well, again, that's depending on the type of prop that you're working on. Um, but on average, how long does it take you to make said prop if you're making one from scratch? Oh, um, so a big one can be anywhere from like, like the longest I've spent on a prop is 100 hours. Like. Oh. But yeah, um, but like on a tiny prop, maybe six, seven hours. Awesome. Now, I've been known to make props myself, and I go through a certain kind of process when making props, and I've been told it's the artistic process. Now, as, as well as being a trained journalist, I am quite handy with a like paintbrush and such likes. And I've never known myself to swear at a, a drawing I'm doing as much as I swear at props. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys right now the prop that has literally driven me insane and I've swore the most at. And it is my wonderful Harley Quinn Jack in the Box. Now, this little guy is cardboard box and a lovely little head and I swear to god I have sworn this more times than I've had hot dinners <laughs> I, I just don't know why it just like it drove me insane trying to work out all the various parts to the box mm -hmm. you know and then the stitching on of the head I think the stitching of the head is what really drove me insane <laughs> it was like <laughs> three in the morning and I'm trying to pin fabric to a polystyrene ball. Yeah. I actually, like, when I was painting it at one point, um, I was doing it in my art class and um, I remember just swearing at the box, like, bleep swearing. <laughs> Two people turned at me and said, why are you swearing? And I was like, because the effing box is driving me mad. Um, so yeah, that, that can happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that's... I, I've screamed at my sewing machine before, so it's fine. <laughs> I've not been I've not been as bad as that yet. Oh, it will happen. It will happen. I, I'm pretty sure it will, because I came... I will admit, I, I haven't screamed at a sewing machine yet, because the sewing machine has never ticked me off. But... I'm going to show you this here. This is a sneak peek for some people who might see me at MCM. But when I used fabric paint on this t-shirt and this top, like I did almost come close to swearing. <laughs> but then fabric paint is very difficult to work with. Yeah. So, um, I'll show you more of this later because it's something that I'm very proud of. Um, okay, so we've covered props, we've covered age differences. Um, what has been the... the what, what has... Ah, okay. What is something that cosplay has opened up 
for you specifically away from like being at a comic con or being within costume in general i mean it just introduced me to a lot of people that i consider my very good friends now um i think before i started cosplay i didn't really have many friends um but now i have like a pretty good circle of friends that i'm close with um that you know um pretty much everyone who was at kitacom this weekend or this past weekend um i consider a really good friend of mine um just, and i don't know like i just you can be unapologetically yourself around them and that's what i appreciate uh more than anything awesome so one of my last questions for you is who are you going to be well who are your next three cosplays so <laughs> the next person that you're going to be at your next event mm -hmm. somebody that you're working on that we might see somewhere towards the end of the year and somebody who's currently like in the head but hasn't made it to paper or you haven't started a costume on so okay. who are you who are you going to be at your next event so my next event is probably uh london mcm mm -hmm. um and i'm cosplaying beast boy but from the 2008 run of the titans uh so it's his changeling outfit technically um it's kind of ironic that you say that because I was watching um, a Greg Chips. Is it Chips? I, th I think it is. It's the guy who voiced him in the television shows. All right. I was watching a video of him last night singing the song that Beast Boy sings to Terra in the Teen Titans Go TV oh. show. <laughs> so ironic. <laughs> um, so Beast Boy. Yeah. Um, um, who is one that you're currently working on that one we might see later on in the year? Uh, one I'm currently working on is the Red Mage from Final Fantasy XIV. I was actually going to enter um, ECG with that, but mm -hmm. it's not going to be ready in time. I had an evil plan where if I failed the UK uh, UK's ECG, I was going to enter Ireland's one because I also have an Irish passport. But then I found out Ireland doesn't have an ECG cup preliminary. And I'm like... This ruins my plan. Come on, step it up, Ireland. <laughs> yes, Ireland, step it up. <laughs> um, and also, who is somebody that you're thinking of for either mid next year or early next year? Um, so, that one's kind of difficult. I really want to do Novar, uh, like a full latex outfit as Novar. Um, but at the same time, it's just kind of like doing it. Like, it's weird. I want to do it, but then it's like working with latex is just like expensive and it can go so much can go wrong. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> awesome. Um, and my last question before we do the wrap up and pass over is what advice would you give to somebody who is wanting to start to cosplay but doesn't necessarily know where to start? Um, I would definitely check out uh, Kamoe Cosplay. She has a lot of books that are specifically made for beginners in terms of cosplay. She also has, uh, also has a lot of great cosplay video tutorials um, in terms of making costumes. I'd also say check out my own makeup tutorials because um, <laughs> uh, uh, they can be used for most anime male characters. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say find some cosplayers on YouTube that make decent quality videos. I'll be blunt, they're rare because most cosplayers are costume makers, not video editors. Um, but there are a few cosplayers out there that understand both and those ones are great. I can't recommend Kamui enough though, like especially if you're starting sewing. I actually bought her book for sewing because I was curious and um, even for me, like I've been sewing for ages now. And that, like, I picked up a few things from that book. So I definitely can't recommend her books enough. Awesome. Um, okay, well, that has been our interview, guys. And it is now time for us to do the wrapping up of this. Um, however, if you do have any questions for either myself or Faust, please do put them in the comment section down below. And we will both try our very, very best to get back to you with a answer to your question 
Um, also, if you for some reason cannot get enough of me, there is plenty more videos where I speak to a lot more cosplayers and a lot more of other people on my channel, the J452 channel. Also, there will be some gaming videos there as well, which you can go along and watch. I will be live streaming them at some point. Um, if you do want to catch up with me when I am gaming, I always publicise it on both iGameOnline or the Jai Facebook page. You can come along and join me on Twitch. Um, also, speaking of iGame, you can join us wonderfully at this website, which is a free sign up, guys. And as you can see, we're both on Facebook and YouTube as well, so you can find us there. While you're there checking out iGame, you might want to check out these people, the NAUK cosplayers, which include Kovi Kicks, Alpha Betty, and Little Rascal. You can see what they've been getting up to. And lastly, um, we do have somebody here that can tell us where we can get in touch with him if we have any further questions for him and where his social media feeds are. So Faust, where can we get a, hang of you, well, a hold of you if we have any further questions or if we just want to generally support you? Uh, so my YouTube channel is It's Super Effective, youtube.com forward slash It's Super Effective. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, which is at RBM Faust. Um, and then, like, you can find my Facebook page and stuff from those two. Awesome. It's simple enough. <laughs> and don't worry if you miss any of those guys, because there will be in the, um, I think it's the description of this video, like, do you see it down there? There's a description down there. Um, also guys, don't forgive us, uh, don't forget even to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, my channel, as well as going along and subscribing to Phil's channel, which is amazing, guys. Totally go and subscribe. Um, and find out what we're doing on iGame. We will have plenty more Call of Cthulhu and various other tabletop games happening very, very soon. So do go along and find out what's happening with them. Until then, I've been Jai. Faust has been Faust, this has been Insight Cosplay, and we will see you all again real soon. Bye guys! Bye!